Imagine being able to import any kind of blog that you create in Rhino as a family in Revit. With the help of the Bean plugin for Rhino and Revit, this is now possible. If you want to see how this works, stay until the end to find out. Before we start, I just want to emphasize that this is not a sponsored video. I heard about this tool from a lot of different sources and I decided to test it out myself. It turns out that this is super useful and easy to use and that's why we decided to share it with you. Beam plugin was created by MKSD Tech and actively used by many famous architectural companies as you can see from the website. Its main goal is to solve cross compatibility with Rhino and Revit. Thanks to this tool we can easily import any kind of geometry from Rhino to Revit and from Revit to Rhino including adaptive components, but maybe the most important part is that you have the ability to import blocks that you create in Rhino as a family in Revit. There are two versions of this app, both paid and free. You can test out the free app and see how it works, but you would have limited imports. The paid version doesn't have any limitations if you wish to test it out. Now let's go to Rhino and see how it works. Okay, so here we are in Rhino. And the first thing that you need to check, you need to check to see if you have beam panel here opened up. If you don't just right click on any of the tabs and you should select the beam one, it would open up. At the same time, you need to have beam installed in Revit. You should be seeing the beam tab here and you can see here are a couple of available options. That means that you have properly configured both Rhino and Revit part. Now let's go to Rhino. Let's see how we can use these blocks. Here I have a regular polysurface. I have polysurface uh, for the window frame and, and the window itself. If you want to create a block from this, of course, you need to select all of this and we type block and the base point is going to be this one. And we're going to, to choose here what we want to call this. So in this case, let's call it module one. At the same time, we're going to call this one module two. So we have two different types of shapes for our facade. So I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to say block. This is going to be the base point and I'm going to say module two. And now, you know, you will see, for example, if this is now a block, if I copy this over and let's say that I have multiple copies of this block, this will give me uh, the option to kind of test out my facade and my facade design. I'm going to also do this. I'm going to copy this vertically as well like this. And we can, of course, do the same thing with the second module. And then the last one can be some kind of mix between the two. So we can, for example, select, let's say, some parts of this. And then I'm going to copy this over like this. And then I'm going to select the other ones to fill the gaps. Let's copy this. Let's move it here. And now we have this kind of facade design. We have this one with only one module and this one with the initial module. Okay. When you go to BIM here and if you select this first one, it's going to take the family name just like the name of the block. So the family is going to be module one. If you take this one, it's going to be module two. Okay. And here, what you can do, you can actually set the comments of this particular can, you can add family parameters here for the instance and for the type. You can type the keynote, the type mark, the instance, also the work set. If you have certain work set in, in Revit, the whole idea here is that this is going to be recognized in Revit when you import it. Okay. We're going to select all of them. So now we have 24 blocks selected and we're going to click here, export Rhino blocks. Once we click here, we're going to give it a name. In this case, we can call it a set option. A, a for example click beam and now we have the confirmation that all of this is export now if you go to revit and we simply need to again click on the green button that says blocks it will recognize the latest option in this case it's facade option a you only need to click import family leave everything as default and click on beam now this will import all of our blocks from uh, rhino to revit directly as families you can see that we have this design our facade design, which is the same as the one we have in Rhino. When you click on it, you can see it says module one. This one is, of course, module two. OK, so that's how we properly modify them. However, they are, uh, of course, here under generic models. And we have the option to kind of see what we have in terms of the parameters here. Now, what if we want to give it some materials in Rhino and we want to update that in Revit? This is also possible. For example, if you go here now, and I'm going to enter one block here. So I'm going to enter my block and I'm going to select this wall. I'm going to, do, to go to my materials and here I'm going to choose concrete. 
right click, assign to objects. For the glass, I'm gonna choose the glass, right click, assign to objects, and then this guy, the frame, I'm gonna use metal, right? Assign to objects. Once I go, for example, to render mode, I'll be able to see that I have applied the glass material here, and I have the, the materials on my module, on my first module. Well, let's see what would happen if we import the whole thing again. We select everything, we go to uh, beam, we do the blocks again, and now we say facade option A, let's call it one. So this is like an update. Beam, we go to Revit, look at this. Just click here, it remembered. We can just say beam. And now once we import all of these guys, uh, they will be updated as well. If we click on this module, and if you click on edit type, you'll be able to see that it has those materials applied. Material 1, material 2, material 3, which is concrete, glass, and metal. This means that it remembered our Rhino materials, okay? This is a great asset. And now, if you want to check this other one, this one, of course, doesn't have any materials associated with it because we didn't add it any of our materials in Rhino. If you, do, if you want to do the same, you can again do the same. You just double click and you apply the same type, type of materials here and it will affect the whole block. So you select the glass here again, sorry, assign to objects and here a metal assign to objects, click OK. And now if you click on rendered, we have all of them ready. Again, last, last thing that we need to do is go here and export them. Now we're gonna call it facade uh, option A2. And when you click here, you have the materials applied. Just like that, we managed to apply all of these elements and all of these materials. I'm just gonna turn on realistic so you can see as well here in Revit how our facade looks like. If for any reason you want to modify some existing block, so for example, let's say that we want to change this guy and I'm gonna enter the block here. Let's, let's create maybe one surface here and I'm gonna do Boolean split. And now I, I just want to delete this part. Okay, so let's say that I want to see how my building would look like with this design. And you can see the changes that I have here with all of my blocks. And all I need to do is update the script once again. I go to blocks, set option A3, and this would give me the update right away. I would just need to click here, click on beam, and we have the geometry updated, just like that. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to share here with you is what if you want to add something to this block? What if you want to modify it? So, for example, let's say that we want to make some kind of hand railing here. So I'm going to type here 1.1 and I'm going to extrude this curve in this direction. Let's go until here and I would just slightly extrude it like this. I'm going to move this inward, something like this. I'm also going to scale it down just a tiny bit. Okay, I want to add this to my block. I would open up the block. I would add the object here. I would click OK and enter. And now this module would become this one, right? OK, now once I have them all selected here, I can simply come here to families. I can select module number one and I'm going to deselect these guys. I only need these ones and I'm going to beam them again. I would say module one updated. I'm going to beam this and you will see once we, sorry, not this one, this one, uh, once we beam them, you will see that they are gonna be modified as well and they will have the material applied to them. So there it is, that's our block. And that would be the easiest process to import your blocks from Rhino to Revit and test your design options in Rhino and then check them out in Revit. So what do you think about this tool? Would you find it useful in your workflow? Let me know in the comments and let me know if you'd like to see more in-depth tutorial or recover how to combine Grasshopper with Beam and Revit. If you're interested in seeing some additional features of the Beam plugin, you can check out the extended version of this tutorial on our Patreon page. And with that, you also get access to all of our other extended tutorials and project files. The link is in the description.